And I know I'm going to see the two fix, so whoever gets it, spin them out with baby carrots, because I know they're going to be two fix. So in here, I'm going, and this carrot, it's Sweet Baby Jane. And the reason I picked this one to grow here is because it is a good baby carrot, but it is also very good if you leave it grow to full size. So that's in the middle. And then around that, and because you can plant this, eat these when they turn to green onions, and the carrots won't have gotten that big yet, and I'm going to plant them that they're just about touching, and that way you can um, pick some as green onions, and others you can leave to grow a little bit bigger. You can basically do some, you can cut the tops off and use them as chives, and let the bottom bulb grow. It's all your own choice. And you know, when you look at it, you're getting quite a few onions in this pot. So you're, so it's circular in the middle and then, and then a circle of onions around the Yeah. Okay. okay. And you just kind of lightly cover them up. And like I say, when they start to grow, you can cut off some of the tops for green onions if you want. Or you can pull them and use the whole onion and let them grow bigger. It's all your own choice, whatever so you fancy. How often do you water that once you get the of It so much depends on the weather. You know, if you get a 30 degree day, you're going to probably have to water it morning and evening. No, you can if you want, or you can wait till this time of the year and just plant them outside on your deck and you don't have to worry about hauling them in and out. And then on the outside, because this pot's deep enough and you're going to get rid of the onions probably sooner than the carrots, what you do is you just right quite close to the onions, you can plant some beets. You don't have to plant beets because I know some people don't really like beets. So say the back half of this you can plant some beets. So you cover that in. And then... What kind of beets? These are early wonder. What about, what about cylinder beets? They would work fine too. The only thing is with the cylinder beets... Yeah, there's a... There's that ridge. But, you know, if you've got a pot, like one... Right. So you can get deeper ones like yes. this. Yes. So, and then in the front of this... Oh... I lost my lettuce. And in front of this, I'm going... Oh, I've got something. Where, what happened to my lettuce? Oh, there it is. So over here, we'll plant a little bit of lettuce. And to give you a real smorg, we'll plant a little bit of spinach on this side. There. How? You got a salad. How big across is that pot? Like what size? Sixteen. Okay. So there. You have a salad in a pot. Mm -hmm. And then once the carrots get bigger and the beets get bigger, you got your vegetable in a pot. And like I say, you can always replant. You could put radishes in here. I was going to bring radishes and I forgot. And a lot of people do like to plant radishes in pots because they don't tend to have the problem with the worms is what they do in their garden. Um, so, like, you can plant just about anything you want in a pot, but just remember it needs a little bit of loving because you don't, these plants don't have your whole yard to draw from some food and moisture. They depend on you to do it. So if you're going to be going away for two weeks to the lake in the summer, either haul, haul your pot with you or hope you have a nice neighbor <laughs> because it's going to need a lot of watering. So it is a little bit of work. But okay, it all depends on what this you can get away with this and tomato is the most important. You need to fertilize at least every ten days to fourteen days. 
The peppers, too, should be every 10 days, 14 days. These here, you can get away with probably fertilizing them about once a month because they're not as heavy of feeders as what the growing plants are. So, and most greenhouses now, because I went up to the greenhouse on our lot the other day, and most greenhouses now are starting to start more plants for container gardening. The one thing I did, and I wanted to bring another pot and I just totally forgot. Herb gardening has to be the easiest thing to do in pots. The only thing is, I'll tell you right now, basil does not like to be transplanted. I have been trying for years, and every time I try and transplant my basil, half of it dies, if not more. So I've taken to just sprinkling the seed in the ground. Grows wonderful. But what you can do in a pot like this for herbs, in the middle, plant some fern leaf dill. Everybody uses dill for something or the other. And don't plant the old-fashioned dill that grows this high with the big heads on the top, because that's not what you want for cooking. You want, like, the fern leaf dill that grows about this high, and the whole stem is solid fern. And you can, it's wonderful for cooking. So you can put that in the middle instead of Swiss chard for something cute. On one side, you can seed some basil. On the other side, you can seed some oregano. Or if you want to get a jump start on it, you can seed, well, dill grows so fast, you can seed some dill in the middle and go to the greenhouse and get some different herbs of what kind that you like to cook with. And I, my herb pots are not this deep. I've got herb pots that are probably about this big around, but they're only about this high. And I have all kinds of herbs in it. And what I do is don't, I'll give you a little hint with herbs, don't ever let them go to seed or to bloom. Like basil, oregano, thyme, they all go to bloom so quick. As soon as those blooms start to go, snip them off because if you don't, the plants, the basil, the thyme, everything like that tends to get a bitter taste to it. So snip those flowers off as soon as you start to see them form. And you know what I do? I go out there with my basil all season, and I snip it off, 